when we are playing striding shot with center ball and hitting the cue ball with low speed, then we aim at the ghost ball point. But if we increase the angle and execute this shot in same way like before, then we can see that despite the fact that cue ball hits the object ball at its ghost ball point, it follows in different direction. During contact between the balls, we faced factor which is called cut-induced throw. This means that if we play a cut shot like this and if we hit the cue ball with low speed, then it pushes the object ball slightly to the outside, which can sometimes result with mistakes. If you can't believe what just happened, then I need to show you this situation where as you can see we have combination where balls are touching together and they are aimed perfectly straight at the pocket. In this situation, one ball represents the ghost ball of this shot, so if we hit the one ball with full contact, then four balls should go towards center point of the pocket. However, when we hit the cue ball at the same point and with the same speed as before, we can see that the four ball goes in a completely different direction. The first option to fix this problem is to play this shot using more speed. If we hit the cue ball with same spin but with high speed, then we can see that the four ball behaves much different than before. So in this case, if we take away one ball and face our shot again, then if you want to hit the object ball at its ghost ball point, then we need to use more speed to strike in final path of the four ball. But if we want to play this shot with low speed, then we need to aim a bit thinner, because then the position of the ghost ball point will slightly change, but the cut induced throw factor will cause the cue ball to slightly push the object ball on the correct direction. Ok, and let's come back to the striking shot and this time I will try to hit the object ball at its ghost ball point, but I will use left hand English. And as you can see, despite we are hitting the object ball at the correct point, it going bit to the right. And this time we face another very interesting factor which is called the spin induced throw. If we go back and analyze this situation, then we can see that the left hand English applied to the cue ball pushes the object ball slightly to the right and additionally transfers some opposite rotation to this ball. And during this shot we can see that the cue ball curves slightly before hitting the object ball. The same will happen if we try to play this shot using right hand English, but this time cue ball has right rotation which pushes the object ball slightly to the left. So in this case if we want to play 4 ball perfectly straight, then we need to adjust our aiming to the certain side. For example, if we are using left hand English, we need to aim slightly more to the right, and if we are using right hand English, then we need to aim slightly more to the left. Ok, but everything changes if we increase speed of the shot. If we try again to hit the object ball at its ghost ball point and use medium speed, then we can see that the four ball going to the other side. And this is because the spin induced throw decreases and this time we didn't notice any curve of the cue ball. Additionally, we face another important factor which is called deflection, which means that if we are hitting the cue ball at its side points, then it deflects to the opposite side than given spin. And of course, level of deflection depends on what speed we are using on the cue ball, so in this case as much speed we will use, higher deflection will be. So in this case, if we increase the speed of the shot, then we can see that if I hit the cue ball with left hand English, then the object ball going towards the left side of the pocket. And this is because the spin induced throw factor and curve just gone and the only one thing we face at this moment is deflection. So to make 4 ball perfectly straight, we need to adjust our aiming to the left to hit the object ball at its ghost ball point. Ok, but at this point I need to mention what will happen if we increase the elevation of our cue stick because then the differences between shots are huge. If we try to hit the object ball at its goal ball point and use low speed, then we can see how cue ball curves much more and this happens because we are hitting from high elevation, so cue ball rotates in different surface for a period of time and this causes it to grab the cloth more and hit the object ball in completely wrong point. Situation changes if we execute same shot with same spin but this time we will use high speed. Then we can see that the cue ball didn't make curve and we are able to pot the object ball. During shots from high elevated cue stick, very important is distance between the balls. If we elevate our cue stick higher and aim this ball perfectly straight and hit the cue ball with low speed, then we can see that it has more time to curve and almost miss the object ball. 
And this means that in this situation, our final point at which we should aim is in a completely different place, far away from the object ball. Ok, but sometimes the spin-induced throw factor can help us in specific situations. Here, as you can see, we have combination where both balls are touching together, but they are not directed at the center of the pocket, and if we hit the 4-ball with full contact, then we are missing the 9-ball. So in this case, to make it possible to pot the 9-ball, we need to hit this combination on the left side and apply left-hand English. During this contact, Cubo will slightly push the 9-ball to the right, towards correct direction. And same thing will happen if we change direction of this combination to the other side, but this time we need to hit it on the right side and apply right-hand English. After this hit, Cubo pushes ball slightly to the left and transfers some spin and 9-ball ends inside the pocket. And there is second example where we have situation that 4-ball and 9-ball are touching together and are placed in such a way that if we hit the 4-ball as full as possible to avoid hitting the 9-ball first, then we are missing the shot because there is too little space to hit the 4-ball at this goal point. And in this situation, we need to use again the spin-induced throw to be able to still pot the 4-ball. So in this case, to make 4-ball into the middle pocket, we need to apply a lot of right-hand English and use low speed on the cue ball. The spin-induced throw factor will push the 4-ball slightly to the left, which opens possibility to pot this ball. And the most difficult during this shot will be to find correct speed and to hit the 4-ball as full as possible to avoid making contact with the 9-ball first. And at the end of this episode, I need to show you how you can use the spin-induced throw factor during executing bank shots to manipulate object's ball path. In this example, we have to play bank shot on the 4-ball, and both balls are placed on the line which show the natural angle of the bank shot. So in this case, if we hit the cue ball with center ball and medium speed, then the 4-ball should go into the opposite middle pocket. Situation changes if we try to apply left-hand English, because then the cue ball slightly push the 4-ball to the right and transfers some right rotation, and 4-ball hits long rail behind the middle pocket. And we can change path of the object ball to the other side when we apply right-hand English, because then Cubo pushes the 4-ball slightly to the left and transfers some left rotation which causes it to hit the long rail before the middle pocket. So as you can see, cut and speed induced throw plays a very important role in billiards, and they can be both your enemy and your friend in the same time. You should use them in appropriate situations and be aware of the impact they have on the behavior of the balls on the table. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a thumbs up and share your opinion in the comments below. If you like my content and what I am doing here, then hit the subscribe button to be updated with videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Take care.